Over the last 40 years, plenty of history has been made in Allie P. Reynolds Stadium. But now, Oklahoma State baseball and that rich tradition are getting a new home. Obrate Stadium's inaugural season is finally here. As they say on the diamond, batter up. All you Oklahoma State fans and welcome to Obrate Stadium, make it happen. Today we are going to take you inside the new home of Cowboy Baseball. I'm your host, Megan Robinson. I'm here just next to the field where you can see the grounds crew getting ready for opening day. Construction of Obrate was complete in March of 2020, but the inaugural season was delayed due to COVID. That didn't stop the anticipation of a new home for a program rich with tradition. From the natural grass in the outfield to the state-of-the-art locker room, this place is truly incredible. Our Julia Benbrook got a one-on-one -on -one tour with the man responsible for paving the way for these new facilities, Oklahoma State University Athletic Director Mike Holder. I'd put it up against any uh, baseball facility in the world, major league and otherwise. So we're getting the player perspective right now, walking from second base to first base. What is it that makes this different for the players? Well, I think the, it's perfectly level. Uh, it drains from below, so you don't have to have any slope. It's basically, I think, going to play like a billiard table. So if you're an infielder, there are really no excuses, not really any bad hops or bounces. And I think the favorite thing is the grass. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big natural grass person, being a golfer uh -huh. and being around grass my whole life. So what are some of your favorite pieces that we're looking at right now? Well, I'm proud of that make it happen phrase for Cecil mainly and then I'm proud of the name up there on the video board out in front of the stadium and in center field because uh, without Cecil Obrate, we'd probably still be talking about this dream 20 years from now. And so now we're here in the locker room. We've got the OS branding on each of these lockers, and that represents both Obrate Stadium, but also kind of has a history with our baseball program. Yeah, when the, we had our heyday in uh, baseball with Gary Ward primarily, uh, that was the logo, and uh, there was a lot of tradition, a lot of uh, brand equity in that. That's why you see it here in the, in the locker room. And then above, the players' lockers, you see a placeholder right now. That we have the OS logo on the front entrance, the center field entrance, uh, fairly well uh, placed throughout the facility, and we're, we're really proud of the history that goes along with that. Yeah. And I talk all the time about the importance of skill development in sport, but also, more importantly, the personal development. And I really feel like every one of our coaches is a life skills coach. I think Josh will start every day in this uh, space talking about things far above and beyond uh, the daily workings or important things of baseball and trying to develop the next generation of leaders. Uh, they can get inside and get some work done. And then just uh, outside the indoor, we have an artificial infield and uh, we play a lot on artificial turf at other facilities so it'll be good to get some work on that if it works the way we hope uh, we're going to turn that practice infield which is fenced in over to all the youngsters and they can play wall ball or wiffle ball and then uh, adjacent to the practice infield is a pitching lab and the great facility helps attract the fans and then when the fans show up and fill up the stadium and bring the atmosphere. Those, all those elements combine to create the magic. And that's what we're looking for is the magic. 
As Coach Holder said, we cannot wait to get fans inside. We know you will absolutely love it. They say baseball is America's pastime. And while what's happening on the diamond is important, going to a game is really about the family experience. And Obreit Stadium has a lot to offer. I met up with Peyton Phillips from OSU Athletics to check out not just the best seats in the house, but to see what other fun can be had in the ballpark. Peyton, this is my first time here at Obreit Stadium and it is just a beautiful facility, but I'm really hoping I can get back here as a fan at some point this year. If I do get back, what are some of the things that I can experience while I'm here? Well, what makes this facility so special is the fan experience and all the different things that each of our fans can do. There's an experience kind of tailored to what anyone could want. Well, since I'm here right now and I have your attention, can you show me around the stadium? Be glad to. Let's start with the corral. So you said that the corral is the place to be in Obreit Stadium. We are in one right now. This is a pretty special place for a college baseball stadium. Uh, our corral holders, it's basically a, a suite, a picnic area, uh, a tailgate space inside of the baseball stadium. So uh, what our corral holders will get uh, with their corral supplied by us is a large uh, storage facility, a Rectech grill, uh, and then of course they'll have all this space, including the space all the way to the drink rail in front of them to watch the game, hang out, and just have the kind of party that they want to have at a baseball game. And there's one other thing I've noticed behind me that looks pretty fun. This, this bar over here. I think yeah. we should go check that out too. Alright, let's okay, do it. Let's go. We are posted up at the bar. So, bars are not super common in college stadiums. So what made you guys want to put one in Obrey? Well. When you build a uh, 70 plus million dollar baseball stadium, you want to make sure that you not only have a great student athlete experience, but you also have a world class fan experience. And that's what this bar and everything else about this stadium is all about. And can't help but notice that we are right next to the visitor's bullpen. We're calling this the Oasis. Uh, after you may have heard of him, Garth Brooks is one of our uh, favorite alumni here. So uh, uh, with his song, with Friends in Low Places, this will kind of be our home for our friends in low places. It'll be an oasis for everyone not warming up. So we have the corral, we have the bars, we have the drinking rails around the stadium. I'm getting the sense that down low is kind of where you'll find the party here at Obrey. Yes. But where do we go if you want a more premium upscale experience? Oh, well, we've got plenty of room for that. Right over here, back behind home plate, we've got our suites and our club level. Hey, you're not gonna lie, the corrals in the bar area look pretty fun to watch a game, but this club does not look too bad either. No, not at all. If uh, you wanna have a more polished experience at Obreit Stadium and still have some fun, but also get the nice bells and whistles, this is the place to be. So you get to come upstairs, get out of the elements. We know Oklahoma can get windy or cold or hot. This will be a place to get out of that. And then when you do want to go watch the game, you can either do it inside from one of our drink rails or one of our chairs in here, or you can go sit outside, enjoy the fresh air, enjoy the game, and especially those nice cushioned seats that feel like you're sitting on a Tempur-Pedic mattress while you're watching the game. I tried one out and that was the most comfortable seat I've ever sat in at a baseball game. Yes. And you had so much leg room, which is unheard of in a ballpark. Yes, that is, uh, we wanted to make sure that it was a comfortable, nice high class experience for our club holders. Peyton, final stop on our fan experience tour. Where are we standing right now? So we are at what we call Dreamers Diamond. It's actually the turf practice field that our student athletes practice on situated between our batting cages and our pitching lab. So this is a pretty neat facility that we'll be able to use on game days for kids, families, whatever that want to come out here and have a little bit of fun during the game. So much to do other than watching the game here at Obreit, but before I let you go, when I come here, what is the best seat in the house? Obviously, every seat in the house is the best seat in the house, but I would say the corrals are what's gonna set this place apart. If you don't wanna be inside and just wanna have a good time, kind of that tailgating experience inside a baseball stadium, that's what sets Obreit Stadium apart from the rest of our peers. If you'd like to experience Obreit for yourself, visit tickets.okstate.com baseball. 
We are inside Obreit Stadium at Oklahoma State University, where the motto is make it happen. It's only fitting it's named for the man who helped make the stadium happen, Cecil Obreit. He had never attended a game in the old Ali P. Reynolds Stadium when he agreed to donate $35 million to construct new facilities. Julia Benbrook introduces us to the man who helped turn the dreams of a new ballpark into a reality. Cecil grew up during the Great Depression. A man of many talents, he's worked in farming, banking, oil and gas, and taken on various entrepreneurial endeavors. We visited him at his office in Garden City, Kansas, about the impact he's had on his community, this university, and his ability to make it happen. So, you know, Cecil's motto is make it happen. So, we use it against him maybe a little bit. <laughs> Somebody that's 91, never thrown a baseball before. In two months, he's come a long way. Yeah, I'm already retired. But you come in every day, every day, and you still follow your schedule, and you... I usually try to get here around 6.30. Okay. And go to the gym about 5, 5.30. I usually am here, first one here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the last one to leave, but close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cecil attended OSU for two years, starting in 1946. He received his honorary doctorate in 2018. I knew college was important. And... I always wanted to go, even after I moved to Kansas, I wanted to go back here to school. Mm -hmm. I would have went to four years, but my granddad was farming up here, and he had a chance to rent another farm, and you don't get that very often. Okay. So I got on the internet, and sure enough, I read his bio, and at the bottom it said, attended Oklahoma State University. So I thought, what the heck? I called him up, cold called him. And he took my call and he asked me what I wanted. And I said, I want to come meet you and reconnect you to the universities. I, I like to fly under the radar. And it's kind of hard to do now. So Mike called me and drove up here to see me. And before I wasn't going to any games, I wasn't involved at all. But he got me started. The level of enthusiasm and the reaction uh, that I've seen on people's faces when they first walk in and the excitement that people feel. Uh, I wish I could bottle all that up and send it to Garden City so they could really just see the impact it's having. Make it happen, you know, I think for us is to be able to explain to the kids that's not just a baseball concept, it's a life concept. It's a dream come true, so thank you. Oh, there you go, that's a strike. What would your message be for the OSU baseball team as they play their first game in Obrate Stadium? The first thing they got to remember is what uh, the sign says down there, make it happen. All right, boys, let's make it happen. Thanks, Julia. While Cecil Obrate will be one of the big names at OSU baseball for years to come, there is another name that has been synonymous with the program for decades. That name? is Holiday. You have head coach Josh Holiday, who grew up in the Cowboy Clubhouse. His father, Tom, spent 25 years as a coach here at Oklahoma State. And his brother, Matt, well, he just returned to Stillwater as an assistant coach after 15 years in the major leagues. Baseball is just in their blood. Wellbraid Stadium is the, the next chapter in, in what has been an amazing tradition at this university for the sport of baseball. What does baseball mean to this family? Um, well, <clears throat> I don't know that we really had much of a choice, to be honest with you. I remember in, in being an elementary kid, and you would write down what you wanted to be when you grew up, and I never really, you know, I saw all the other kids' answers, and. I never really wanted to be anything but a baseball player, and, and I don't remember ever being interested in, you know, kind of the popular answers that the other kids had. I think all three of us had the same high school career. We all three played basketball, football, baseball, and I felt like I was being pushed into football and just kind of like at the last minute, finally got a letter that said, hey, we want you for baseball. So I took that scholarship and um, I, I, I tried to expose both of those sports to Matt and Josh uh, 
football and basketball, but we could do it. We'd get out there and we'd play. We just always seemed to end up back with a bat and ball and back in the yard and playing catch, trying to, trying to figure it out. It was the foundation of the way our lives were built. As kids, I say we didn't have a choice. I don't think we would have chosen differently had we had a choice, but it was the way that things uh, were laid out for us. And it was the opportunities that the sport provided to, to grow and learn and, and, and try to um, become uh, better. Dad, what's your favorite memory of this place? I think probably. being in the wrong dugout. And everybody over here chanting no more. Because it got to be a, I think it was the second time we went. We had worked pretty hard. What year was that? I think it was 83. And, uh, Coach Ward came over and said, um, pretty special fans. Uh, we still had like three outs to, to get the win. But um, they started to chant, and um, you could feel the whole ballpark like breathing. All right, guys, tell me the truth. What were you doing while we were inside coaching, getting ready to play a game? <clears throat> well, we were hanging out on the, the hill. Um, playing wiffle ball or the batting cages that used to be over here on the first baseline, uh, hitting, trying to imitate the players. I remember getting uh, in that locker room, <laughs> getting, uh, putting hampers and lockers. Some yeah. of the players used to, yeah. if you got a little laundry with them, they uh, would put you in a hamper and spin it as fast as they could across the locker room. Everything that ever happened here will always stay with us and uh, we'll continue to honor uh, Reynolds Stadium and all the players and coaches and moments by uh, doing things the right way moving forward and never forgetting uh, all the awesome moments that happened that laid the groundwork. That Obrate Stadium doesn't happen unless Reynolds Stadium happened. The Holiday family made countless memories in Allie P. Reynolds Stadium. And thanks to Cecil Obrate, we have many more memories to come in a brand new home. The next chapter of OSU Baseball begins now. I hope you all enjoyed this sneak peek into Obrate Stadium inaugural season. The guys are behind me getting ready and we are so excited to get it going. It was a year in the making, but now it's finally time to play ball.